standing to your feet for the reading of the Word of God. We're in a series entitled Maximum Impact. Everybody say Maximum Impact. We've been looking at how God impacts people in the month of January. So if you studied with us, Sister Broussard, you were able to watch us look at how God impacted the nameless man of Mark 5 who was filled with demons. Yet when Jesus left him, he was seated and clothed in his right mind. When this man, whose name we do not know, whose testimony we are familiar with, asked Jesus to follow him, Minister Catherine Briggs, Jesus said, no, I want you to go home to the people who taught you how to sin. Go let them see what my grace looks like walking with you. Hey, everybody who can say, I may not be delivered from everything, but it's some stuff I have learned to walk off from. Let me see your hand. Look at your neighbor and say, this is what grace looks like. We looked at the life, Pastor Shagwar, of Adam and Eve, the impact God had on them. If you forget everything, remember this. He cursed the serpent. He said, you came in walking, you're going to eat dust. He cursed the earth. He said, it'll give thorns and thistles. Everything here will die. But he kept the people. He cursed them. He kept you. I need some people in here who've done at some point in your life exactly what God said not to do. But God didn't trash you. God made a decision to keep you. I need some kept people who can say he made a decision to keep me in spite of my mess ups, my mishaps, my sins, my attitude. Look, wait, can I just ask who's been kept beside me? I know I have. If you remember nothing else about the Adam and Eve story, remember this, it wasn't the apple that she bit. We don't know what the fruit was. The issue was they did what God told them not to do and he kept them. Looked at the life of Abraham. Everybody say Abraham. Remember this, ladies and gentlemen. God doesn't bless you with you in mind. He blesses you to be a blessing. You have been blessed to bless. Some of y'all in here know what a mayonnaise sandwich tastes like. And now you on Facebook talking about Del Frisco's steak. Don't you get up and on me in here. You know what it's like to struggle. And now when there are people around you who don't have what you have, don't you turn your nose up. You open up your hand and say, the same God who did it for me. I need some people who know what broke feels like, but you don't ever plan on being broke no more. Tell your neighbor, I know what the struggle is like. Impact, that's what this is about. So we looked at the impact God has on Abraham. We looked at the impact on David. Everybody say David. We looked at the words David spoke when he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. We're going to begin a new study today. Not on people, but on places. Everybody say places. How God impacts certain places. But Della Foss, here's what you're going to discover. God doesn't treat every place the same. It's some places where God shows up and shows out. There's other places the Bible says, and he did not many miracles there. Because they didn't know how to treat it. There were some places where blinded eyes opened, wounded hearts were made whole, demons were dismissed, angels were dispatched, water became wine, wounded hands became straight, dead folk got up and lived again. Let me tell you why I'm teaching this, because I want Antioch Missionary Baptist Church 3920 to be one of the places where God says, if I'm going to bless them people, it's going to be in a place like this. Can I just get 50 of y'all to say amen right there? In fact, you'll just shout this right quick. Lord, bless this place. Bless.
against it. That's what we want. Today we begin the study in Mark, Matthew chapter 14. The place that we're going to study all week. So Pam, every time you see me, we'll be in Matthew chapter 14, talking about one particular place. Everybody say the Sea of Galilee. Yeah, that's good study. Say the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. 13 miles in circumference, 13 miles long and wide, 725 feet deep. It's the second lowest body of water in the whole world, next only to the Dead Sea, which has no marine life in it. It has many aquatic, beautiful fish in it, but two of those are akin to you. One of those is sardines. Everybody say sardines. It's what Peter was fishing for, Deacon Limbrick, when he fished all night long, but he didn't catch anything. Jesus returned and said, put your net on the other side of the boat, and he caught another fish. Everybody say another fish. Mm -hmm. They are called tilapia today, but back then they were called St. Peter's fish. Peter was fishing for what was two inches long, but God gave him what was 14 inches long. The reason why some of y'all won't catch anything is because you've been fishing for the wrong stuff. Your mindset is too small for God. God is trying to give you this and you're settling for this over here. That's why I hope and pray that by the time we finish this, when people tell you no and leave, you'll be glad they told you no and left because they were too small and you don't fit the equation. <sighs> Lord, think with my mind. Talk with my tongue. Fill my body. Preach until you're satisfied. Teach until we're healed. Blessed today in the name of Jesus is my prayer. Amen. Matthew 14. One of the miracles that Jesus does at the Sea of Galilee is walk on water. One of the miracles that Jesus does on the Sea of Galilee Chris is he walks on water. I heard a song that says, how do you walk on water? Put one foot in front of the other. I like it. Say walk on water. And straightway, I'm in your Bible, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with the wind, for the wind was contrary. It was starting to white cap. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Y'all chill out, it's me. And Peter answering him said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, well, get out the boat with your bad self. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> and he said, come. Do you hear that affirmation? And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. That's enough for today. That's enough because I don't have much time. Say man for the reading. Amen. Find somebody's hand to hold. I want you to declare this over their life. Say neighbor, Amen. I'm supposed to be in church today. The word that is about to be spoken is for people like me. Say, I need this message because I've been going through so much lately. Look at them and be serious and say, I know God has something great for me. I know God has great plans for me. And my soul is thirsty for them. Tell them my prayer today is that God speak to me clearly. 
with your prayers, all of your amens, this morning's sermon subject, I hope your ordinary dies. Touch three people and tell them, I hope your ordinary dies. I hope your ordinary dies. The grass withers. The flower fades, the word of our God shall last and stand forever. Thank you, ushers. You may retire. Your service has been wonderful. One of my greatest professors who helped to shape my life both practically and theologically was a gentleman whose name was Dr. Jonathan C. Jackson. He was a Talikian existentialist who loved Jesus Christ. He was philosophically deep enough to sink a German tank in, but easy enough to understand for a toddler to kind of tread across the water of his intellect. He could stand with kings and not lose the common touch. He could go to the rib shack and order six bones and come out with a little barbecue sauce on his shirt and say it was some good barbecue. He never forgot from whence he'd come. One day while we were in dialogue, Dr. Shannon Allen, with this magnificent monumental professor, students began probing his intellect carefully to ask him what he thought about the local church. Dr. Jonathan C. Jackson looked at each of us and said to us that though he loved the Lord, he didn't go to church often. That pierced us. We're looking to become pastors and preachers. Why wouldn't a man like you go to church on a regular basis? Dale Colbert, his note to us simmered in my heart and has lasted forever. Sonda, here's what he told us that day. He said, the church is full of people who are in an illegitimate romance with ordinary. And they refuse to break up and leave ordinary alone. He said, I was raised to know that birds of a feather flock together. And I realize that when I look at my life, though I am 68 years old, I may have been ordinary when God got to me. But God has a habit of taking ordinary people to do extraordinary things. He said, what I want to be near is people who look to do the extraordinary. One of my students, one of my friends, Dr. Kenneth Lamar Jones from Saginaw, Michigan, then asked Dr. Jonathan C. Jackson this question. He said, so then Dr. Jackson, since they're so full of ordinary people, what's your prayer then for the church? He stood up, church, and said these words, I pray and hope that your ordinary dies. He says, I don't want to see anything die in here, but I pray that your attitude of ordinary dies, that you begin to dream dreams that are big enough for you to pray about, that you begin to accomplish stuff other people would look you in the face and tell you it's not possible, but with faith in God, it becomes achievable. He said, I pray for you young preachers not to just preach and sing and entertain people, but get them to realize that God is the God of extraordinary. So once he gets his hands on them, you don't have an extraordinary God producing the ordinary. You were born ordinary, but you will live an extraordinary life of faith. You are a mountain moving. You are a prayer warrior. You are a water walker. You are the person that is in your generation who will do what other people said would not or could not be done. It's Black History Month. Don't tell me it can't be done. I know my history well. If you give Negroes a trash can, they'll make a barbecue pit. If you give us the leftover ruins of a garden, give us leftover greens and a pig, we will come out with pig feet, hog mouth, chitlins, collard greens, and candy. 
candy yams. Don't you tell me we cannot achieve greatness with nickels and dimes. We open Spelman, Morehouse, Prayer View, and Bethune Cookman. And here you are sitting here with your graduate self and degrees, and we can't keep children in school. The devil is a lie. In you inherently is the birth of that which is extraordinary. I need 10 of y'all in it because I ain't got long to preach who know there is something greater in you that has come out yet. And God has greatness planned for your destiny. God has something greater for you. But the only way for... Wait, let me pause. How many of you want to see the greatness God has for you come to fruition? Hold on, don't play. I ain't got a lot of time. How many of you are faced with obstacles you don't think you can overcome? Valleys you don't think you can endure. Problems you don't think you can handle. I need y'all to bear witness. How many of you know that there is something more to life than what you've achieved so far? If I'm talking to you, if you can hear God, wave your hand in here. Let me tell you why. Because the only way for it to happen is for your ordinary to die. Today I pray that ordinary people who are in your life find the nearest exit. I pray that ordinary thoughts that's in your mind find the nearest grave site. I pray that if you have ordinary stuff around you it becomes extraordinary because it's near you. That purse with those letters on it is not something because it's made by a fashion designer boo. It's something because it's carrying it on, it's on your shoulder. Your car is not first class because of who made it. It's first class because you drive it. Your neighborhood is not great because your neighbor is a certain person. It's great because you live there. I I need 50 of y'all who can hear God. I need you to lift your hands right quick and say this to God. God, I want my ordinary to die so my extraordinary can live. So here's the episodic narratology. Watch this. So they're on this boat. They go on the other side. Storm breaks out. The wind is contrary. Jesus comes walking on the waves. My daddy said he really didn't walk on water, Carmen. It's just that when the HTO molecular construct of water saw its creator, they got so happy they wanted to carry it. I don't know which is true. Let me just tell you this, Deacon Dale Boudreaux. He walked on the water. Disciples look up, see him. They think they see an apparition or a ghost, so they panic and say, oh, my God, you know, we're about to die. Because if you've ever been to someone who is passing, they see the people from the past. They start saying, there go big mama and them, and so and so, you know. So they thought they were going to die. Jesus says, hold up. It ain't that kind of party. It's your boy. Okay, that's, that's John Adolf version. Fear not it is I, you know, whatever. <laughs> Peter says, can't nobody but you pull a stunt like this. If it be thou, if third person movement in the text, if and it is you, let me join you on the water. And Jesus said, what you say? So you want to you, you, you come out here? Peter said, yeah. He said, come on with your bad self. And the Bible says, and Peter walks on the water to go to Jesus. Yes, the story ends with Peter sinking and needing a hand up. Yes, the story concludes with Peter taking his eye off of the Lord and sinking. And that's just for you negativists who are here who say, yeah, but he's sunk. But let me tell you how I see it. At least he got his feet wet. some people who want to get their feet wet. Hold on. Let me just go ahead and tell you, be careful being extraordinary because ordinary people ain't going to like you no more. All your ordinary friends going to have something to say. All your ordinary Facebook followers, Instagram people, they're going to be talking about, oh, they ain't always been like that. But let me go on and tell you this. They don't have a heaven to put you in or a hell to declare you to. If God makes you extraordinary, you ought to walk like you extraordinary. You ought to talk like you. Where are the extraordinary people in here? Hold on. Don't be scared to just lump to your your feet, but if you know 
you have been touched by God, favored by God, that there is more to life than what you currently possess, that God still woke you up and lets you live because there are more doors for you to be open. There are more ways that are going to be made. There are more blessings that are coming your way. I need for you to just leap to your feet, high five somebody and tell them, today my ordinary dies. I ain't praying no ordinary prayers no more. I ain't begging God for one house. I'm asking God for a real estate license in the whole neighborhood. I ain't asking God for one student to pass. I'm asking God for the whole district to succeed. I ain't asking God for little stuff no more. I am asking God for the extraordinary. Three things, y'all. I got five minutes. I told about be two and fifteen. Three things. That in this text, Brother Fondo, that resoundingly press us toward being extraordinary. Number one, watch this. You got a desire to do what Jesus is doing. Everybody say, desire to do what Jesus is doing. Uh, when you look at this text, Renata, Peter could swim. We know that from John's gospel where Peter leaps over into the water and swims to shore. He could have done it his way. But what he wants to do, as he is what he sees the Lord do. Hold on. You have to understand this. Peter could have jumped in the water and did the butterfly over to Jesus. Okay, the backstroke. Whatever he wanted to do. Okay, you don't swim well? The puppy pedal. That's good for you. But he decides that instead of swimming, he wants to do some walking. Hey, brothers and sisters, uh, I argue today that when your ordinary dies, you will start wanting to live your life God's way. It's some stuff that you do right now that keeps you on the boat because you're scared to do life God's way. And I say to you, either Jesus has lost his mind or he knows more about Peter than Peter knows about himself. Why would God tell this man walk on water when people sink in water? It's because God made him to walk on stuff he's supposed to be sinking in. Brothers and sisters, it's some stuff you were supposed to sink in, but God help you walk across. Hold on, don't make me preach hard, but some of y'all in here... You were supposed to sink in your last relationship. When they told you bye, they thought it was going to break your heart and leave you talking about, I'm melancholy, I can't make it, I'm going to gain 30 pounds because you don't want me. The devil is a lie. I got in better shape. I feel better about myself. I learned how to pat myself on the back and say, to God be the glory. If you don't want me, I holler at you. You may not want me now, but I don't live in reverse. So see you and I don't want to be you. Who am I talking to? You have been in places, ladies and gentlemen, where life began to crumble around you. And I say to you, there were those who bona fide benefited from your bondage. But instead of you letting them have the way, you learn how to say the benediction now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Brothers and sisters, there are some things about you that God says, I want you to get like me. And until that happens... You're going to keep on living in ordinary. God says, I don't want you to do WWJD. That's what would Jesus do. I want you to do what I'm doing. Pray like him. Hold on. Love like him. Hold on. This is going to be a strain, but just stay with me. Forgive like him. Some of us can't get past ordinary because you still got bitterness built up in your heart over stuff people have done you five years ago. And you don't even like people that look like them. I say to you, the only way for you to get better and get over bitter is to let them go. Hey, brothers and sisters, you got to have faith like him. You got to believe like him. You got to get to a place where you say to yourself, I want to be like him. Sometimes younger people come up to me and say, Pastor Adolf, I want to be just like you. You know what I tell them? No, no, baby. 
Y'all too holy. Hey, DC, this is what I tell them. No, no, don't do that. Because there's some parts of me you don't know about. Let me talk to y'all way over here. No, people in the balcony. You can see, the people on the floor be too holy. Hey, people in the balcony. There's some parts of me you don't know about. I don't want all my business everywhere. I ain't holy all the time. I ain't someone talking about, oh, Lord. Nope, some days I mess up. Some days little Wayne is exactly what I need. Wayne, what? give you what I want you to copy. Are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you? So I tell them, don't aim to be me. You want to aim to be him. You want to walk like him, love like him, forgive like him, pray like him, persevere like him, carry your cross like he carried his. Is there anybody in here who is willing to do life his way? Hold on, don't play. If you're really ready to do life his way, lift your hands in here and tell God, Lord, I want to do it your way. I have done it my way long enough. I want to trust like you. I want to pray like you. I want to persevere like you. I want I want to move mountains like you. God, I want to suffer like you. I want to overcome like you. Make me be just like you. Two, I got to hurry. Watch the second thing. Y'all, this is going to be painful. This might be my last point. This is going to be as much as y'all can take. Number two, if you're going to ever get past ordinary, if your ordinary is going to die, you got to detach yourself from people who want nothing more. So Tiffany, check this out. It's 12 men on the boat. Say 12. One man sees Jesus and says, can't nobody do this but you. Jesus does not call all 12 men. He calls one, Peter. For those who missed his dossier resume and background, Peter is quick to speak, slow to think. Peter has some thug in him. He carries a hook-shaped knife in his vestiture called a sea car, a Swiss blade, a dignified box cutter. And if you cross Pete Rome, he would reach into his jacket and let you know what he's working with. We have proof in the gospel of John where he cut off Malchus's ear and Jesus has to say, Peter, put that knife of yours up. Peter would speak in tongues. Not the unknown kind, but known tongues. The kind of tongues where you had to go boop, 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 you know. Y'all ain't going to pray, but I'm going to teach the Bible. Yet, he's the only one that says, if it's you, let me come out there. Which lets us know he is not looking for earthly perfection. He is looking for somebody of redemption who can say, I have enough faith to trust you with the walk I have. Watch, hold on, don't move yet. We're almost done. But in order for him to get out of the boat and do what God has called him to do, he had to detach himself from his boat buddies. So I want to tell you right now, a part of our biggest problem is we're trying to fit in. And God made you to stand out. And the problem is you're trying to make everybody like you. And God ain't never told you to make other about everybody like you. He just told you to love everybody. See, the moment you begin to walk on the water, the boat people have a conversation. And even though this is not printed on the pages of Holy Writ, I know how the conversation went. James looked over at John and said, why come he can't be normal? Sit down. 
We've been riding the boat. The boat been good enough for us this far. Why come you got to always try something? Why come you can't just be ordinary like the rest of us? We're going to get to the other side eventually. You ain't got to try everything, Peter. Why come you just can't be like us? And ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, you too will have people who got something to say the moment you start making progress. I'm through. This going to be, wait, y'all, this going to shout you if it don't, you ain't going to get happy this Sunday. Let me see the hands of those who have at least two people around you that you know are fake, phony, and fictitious. They all of, they, they look at everything you post. They follow stuff you got to do. They ain't making no comedy. Just looking, 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 you know. They viewed it. They viewed it. Let me tell you how to separate yourself from people that don't really like you. Make plans to do what they could do but won't. Make plans to succeed where they don't want to exceed. Make plans to do stuff that don't include them and then learn how to walk on water. Brothers and sisters, you will never walk on water sitting on the boat. You're going to have to get up and just do the doggone thing. Stop asking for permission to start your business. Stop asking for somebody's approval on the vision God gave you. Stop asking other people to stamp what God already told you you can have. I dare you to just start doing it. Don't wait on the bank. Don't wait on your buddies. Don't wait on other people. Don't wait on other people to see what you see. You tell them God told me I can come and that's why I'm doing it. I got to close. Because my time is way over. Let me just say this. I learned much from my father from Melville, Louisiana. Daddy taught us that Peter didn't walk on water. He said that was the end result. He said, Pastor Shagwal, what he really walked on was a command. See, we see water. But my daddy from Melville, who only went to seminary a couple of years, said what he sees is one word. The word was come. How God gave Peter one command, come. And if Peter would have stayed, he'd have never walked on water. But because he could hear the word that God declared to him, what he did was he took one step out of the boat and said, if you tell me to come, I'll do it by faith. Can I tell you why I'm closing here? Because I believe God has the same word for everybody in here who can say, I see more in my life than what I have so far. And I have been on, been in places where I've been so discouraged, Pastor Adolph, because it feels like things just fail around me. And I think God is saying, it's boat life that's failing. The water is fine. Come. God says you were not even made for that. You were made for doing it the way I do it. But you got to have enough faith to just get out of your ordinary and walk into your experience extraordinary and forget about the voices of them who are complaining and talking negative and telling you what cannot be done. I declare over your life today that there were some things in 2023 that you will do that other people will learn to despise you for. And when they get through writing articles about you and talking about you, you will tell them my ordinary died. I can't live like that no more. I want every blessing God has for me. I want every benefit God has me to have. I want to pass every test God is throwing my way. I want to cash every check with my name on it God has for my life. I want every increase he's ordained for me. Who am I talking to? Hold on, this ain't for everybody. In fact, it's really for one out of twelve. Most of y'all gonna leave here ordinary and come here ordinary and gonna come back ordinary next Sunday because your mind has been taught to be ordinary. But this is for everybody in here who can hear God speaking to you, telling you you are not ordinary you are extraordinary when I made you, I broke the mold, so there will never be another you, your walk is different, your talk is different your life is different, your faith is different, your belief is different, and your income is different, your outcome is different your educational pedigree is different your 
suffering is different. Your struggle is different. I have made you to be extraordinary. So when people tell you you extra, tell them you are right. I am extraordinary. I pray extraordinary. I believe extraordinary. I think we ought to give God an extraordinary praise. Hold on. This ain't for everybody. This is for people who plan to do the impossible, accomplish the incredible, move the unmovable, stand the unstandable. This is for people who can say, Pastor Adolf, you are feeding my soul. I will tell you, it is not me, it is God. In fact, I am not going to preach this message anymore in this series. I didn't preach it at 8 o'clock. I ain't going to preach it on Wednesday. I ain't going to preach it on Thursday and I ain't going to preach it next Sunday. So if you are here at 10 o'clock service and it feels like God is speaking to you, you ought to jump to your feet right quick. Lift your hands toward heaven and tell God, I receive this. My life is extraordinary. I serve an extraordinary God who died an extraordinary death and had an extraordinary resurrection. I am made in his image, in his likeness and for his glory. So I will walk those stuff I'm supposed to sink in. I will endure things nobody thought I could endure. I will make it through stuff that should have destroyed me. I will not be bitter. I will get better. I will not be stronger. I will be weaker. And when I get where the Lord wants me, I will tell the world if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I would not have made it. Lift your hands. So today, God, my prayer for these of faith is the prayer of my professor. I pray that their ordinary dies. That if they're sick, they would expect extraordinary healing. But if they're broken, they would expect extraordinary restoration. That God, wherever they walk, is extraordinary territory. God, I pray that they are so extraordinary that they would hear your voice say, come and decide at this moment they will begin. I pray for those, oh God, who are going back to school to earn their degree because they heard your word say, come. I pray for the tuition you're going to pay. I pray for the books you're going to buy. I pray for the classes they're going to take. And I thank God for the degree they're going to receive just because they heard your word say, come. I pray for educators who were going to quit that now they can't quit because the children are depending on them and other people are telling them that they cannot do it. It is not achievable. But today, oh God, lift their bowed down head. Give their heart courage to tell them it's not possible with them. But when you all things are possible because they heard your words, they come. I thank you for new business owners who've been thinking about starting a long time. They've made every excuse in the world, but today their ordinary dies, so their excuses are no longer mutable. Thank you today, God, for a brand new beginning for everybody in here who says, God, I want the extraordinary. While your hands are lifted, pray this prayer to God. Say, Lord, Give me the faith to walk on what I'm supposed to sink in. I declare this day over my life that I will live for an extraordinary God in extraordinary ways. I will not complain about my conditions or circumstances, but I will learn how to persevere through each of them. I surrender my life. God, I feel the presence of God. Tell God, I surrender my life. I surrender my burdens. I surrender my problems. Because I want to say no to ordinary and yes to extraordinary. So today I lift my hands and my heart and I say yes to your extraordinary for me. Yes! To my extraordinary, you bless me with. Yes! That is my answer. 
It is my prayer. It is my plea. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of those who can't help but love the Lord, say amen. Give the Lord a crazy hand clap of praise right here. I got to go. 